So, the Suns beat the Clippers in Game 6 and are going to the NBA Finals. Uh, Well-deserved. They played very well in this series, and especially in this game, I thought they were very good. Um, both on the offensive and defensive side on the ball side of the ball and the big thing to talk about of course is Chris Paul who had probably the best game of his career I mean statistically maybe you could find a better one but in terms of a very important game a game six that they didn't have to win but it, it's a very important game and it sends them to the finals to Chris Paul's first finals and he had 41 points and eight assists 31 of those points coming in the second half where he just took over, especially like the very, very end of the third quarter and the fourth quarter. And most of it was just high pick and roll, classic Chris Paul getting to the mid range. But a lot more threes today, I thought. Um, had a couple off the pick and roll, had a couple off isolations, had a couple in the face of Marcus Morris, uh, got an and one on one where maybe he flopped a little bit, but it's okay, it's Chris Paul. And yeah, a very, very good performance from him especially in the fourth and in the second half and then apart from that I thought everyone else on the Suns also played well I mean like no one really had a bad game Torrey Craig I only had three points but played 31 minutes played great defense I thought good hustle you know getting to those loose balls playing defense just everything you want out of a role player Devin Booker only had 22 points but you know obviously if one of your players has 41 everyone else is going to score a little less and wasn't super efficient, but still made a couple of important plays. Got to the rim a few times and dunked it, which I thought was good and is a good sign for the finals. And yeah, he played well. Aiton, I thought they were looking for him a bit more in the first quarter. Had a couple of baskets off pick and roll switches, off putbacks. And then they sort of went away from him as Chris Paul got cooking. He was more of just a screener, which is fine. You know, he, you can't post him up every possession. He's not really a massive post player, but I thought made good on his touches and had 17 rebounds 16 points just a really solid game from him jay crowder was really he really did a lot of their offensive stuff or scored a lot of their points offensively in the first uh, in the first half he had 19 overall but i think he had 16 in the first half hit like four threes and you know if he's hitting his threes and playing good d that's what you want from him man does his free agency decision to sign with the suns look good now and then bridges only played 24 minutes, but had nine points. Got in transition a few times early second half, and played good D. So, really good performance from almost all the Suns. Some of the bench guys, Sarge, Payne, also solid. And yeah, they've been the healthiest team I feel this postseason. But they've also been very, very good on both ends of the basketball. Um, yeah, and just Chris Paul being absolutely incredible in this game with 41 points and eight assists for the clippers you know it just wasn't going for them tonight on either side of the basketball that's sort of the flip side of this i thought offensively i mean it wasn't terrible but they weren't getting to the rim enough i feel was the biggest thing just taking too many jumpers which yeah this team takes a lot of jumpers but you know without Kawhi, you gotta try and get to the free throw line get get inside a little bit and wow, they actually took quite a lot of free throws, so um, I'm maybe a bit wrong on that one. But it feels like they went on too many scoring droughts where there's just too many bad mid-range shots and, you know, maybe not enough movement, just going straight isolation instead of having like a pin down or trying to get a bit of movement before that. And then Paul George, only 21 points. I mean, you know, he, he he's not the reason they lost this series, but, you know, He's sort of out of gas. He's been playing every second night, 40 plus minutes for like a month now. Obviously, he's going to wear down and it, it's just a lot on him and he couldn't do it tonight. But uh, apart from that, you know, Reggie Jackson, 13 points, eight assists. I don't think he played badly, but, you know, when you're when he's your second option, it, there's just going to be some nights like this. And then like no one else really, well, Marcus Morris did, 20, did have 26 points, but I feel like he wasn't very like effective uh which is weird to say but like uh the threes especially at the start of the game weren't falling he missed two wide open threes in the first which you know maybe could have swung the momentum and swung the game and then the sun just played their solid basketball getting points consistently not really uh giving up too many open shots in a row and then 
Um, in the third, the Clippers actually made a little run, uh, hit a couple of threes, got in transition, and cut it down to seven, I believe. And then Chris Paul came back in the game and just took over, which, yeah, that's going to that happen. So, yeah, I don't know for the Clippers. They're always undermanned without Kawhi, and I think they probably did very well in this postseason to get all the way to the conference finals and uh, force this to six games. And, you know, in an alternate universe, maybe the eight and alley-oop goes the other way. And, you know, if Kawhi was healthy, I think they definitely win this series. But he isn't, and they didn't. But still a very honorable performance for the Clippers, apart from when Patrick Bradley shoved Chris Paul. That was not honorable. <laughs> okay, yeah. If we talk about the Suns a bit more, maybe, like, I think they're probably the favorite in the final because they're there already, but if Giannis isn't playing for the Bucks, then they might not even make the finals, but if they do make it, I think they can win if Giannis isn't playing, or if Giannis just, even if Giannis is healthy, I think they can win. I'd probably pick the Bucks over them if Giannis was healthy, and then with the Hawks, I think they can beat a Hawks team with Trey Young, without Trey Young, I don't think it matters. I don't think the Hawks have faced guards like Chris Paul and Devin Booker. Uh, so it's looking very, very good for the Suns. Uh, very good time if you're a Suns fan. If we talk about um, their path to the finals, which I guess we'll get talked about, because obviously, I'm just going to say, if all teams are fully healthy, the Suns don't win any of these three rounds, but they're not. And, you know, sometimes every there's injuries every year in the NBA, just this year there's been more. And they've stayed healthy, and they have been very good this postseason. I don't want to discredit them, even though it sounds like I just did that. But first round against the Lakers, even though LeBron wasn't 100% at 80, he wasn't playing for the last two, three games, uh, you still have to beat them. Aiton was very good in that series. Devin Booker was very good. And Chris Paul was also sort of injured. And then the Nuggets without Jamal Murray, I mean, that was just a sweep. Again, it, that was a very good series for Chris Paul. And in this series... Even though the Clippers haven't had Kawhi, they've still put up a good fight in almost every game. And uh, Cameron Payne coming through in the first two games, Aiton, Booker, just all these young bridges, all these young guys that the Suns drafted and who played together are showing showing what they can do and getting it done in these playoffs. So, yeah, the finals will start whenever the Eastern Conference Finals ends, plus two days or whatever, but... Yeah, I think the Suns have a very good chance um, because they're the healthiest team and they're a very good team. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching this video, guys. Leave a like, subscribe to this channel for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys next time.